Namaste. Welcome to A New Paradigm of Education. Today we have our special guest with us, Atabe, which I know I just in, pronounced perhaps incorrectly. She can correct us in a moment. <laughs> it's so beautiful to connect with you. And before we go into introducing who you are in this world, I'd just love to introduce our podcast to our guests. So A New Paradigm of Education is a, it's like a movement of energy. So it's an evolution of education. Education that is stagnant is no longer serving. And part of a new paradigm is being able to be fluid and to evolve every moment. There's not actually one set model or framework for a new paradigm because actually as this um, energy is moving, so is the evolution of education. And I believe in the past, um, the old paradigm where it was fixed in certain ways just wasn't serving because you know everybody is different we all have different needs and especially our children so a new paradigm of education really is here to serve humanity serve us to help us to serve our children and it's for them for the next generation so i truly welcome you to our podcast i just will let everybody know a little bit about you quickly and then you can introduce yourself as well so um atavi is a mother and she was a former school teacher and now she's moved into being an unschooling parent and what I find also really interesting is a family constellations uh, facilitator where she has a set of practices for centering intuition in education which is like some of my favorite words education and intuition all together wow and she's also created sense thinking um, which we'll find out more about during the podcast so welcome, welcome, welcome. You're welcome to share something about yourself as well. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much for, for hosting me on this podcast. Um, I've really been enjoying listening to your other interviews and feeling this larger community, you know, of what's emerging in education, which is so exciting. Yeah. As you mentioned in the sort of little introduction, I have, for many years, I was a traditional, uh, a high school teacher, and traditional isn't quite the right word, because even then I was working in these wonderful alternative schools, doing really interesting things. I, I taught in New York City for over a decade, taught high school. I just loved it, actually. I really, It really was a, a wonderful creative space for me and, and, and working with students. And then, um, you know, life came along, <laughs> as it does, and, it, and in particular, it insisted on a few things. Um, and one of them is when my youngest children were born, I have three kids, but when my two youngest were born, we went, we ended up going, especially because of my, my daughter, the middle child, she, um, really hated school <laughs> and in, in, in a way that was unique and intense and, um, and so it, it was the first time I even considered homeschooling, and, and then, of course, ultimately a path of unschooling. Um, so, but the path of unschooling, it wasn't completely new to me because I had been exposed in my education, uh, at least in terms of self-direct. So, you know, I was exposed to self-directed um, democratic free schools and other forms of self-directed learning in community. Um, so going down an unschooling path as a parent has been so rich as you know, some of your hosts point to like this, the path of being an unschooling parent is its own, I would say, spiritual journey. Um, so that's been one really important part of my um, sort of making some adjustments about how I understand education. And then the other path has been um, my work as a family constellations facilitator. Are you familiar with the process? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll mention it, but I'm always yeah, curious. I would love to hear about what that is. I have heard of the term, but I've never had it for myself um, explained <laughs> explained fully. So we'd love to hear about that whenever you whenever you want to share that too, of course. Well, I was introduced to the practice about 11 years ago now. <clears throat> and um, and when I heard it, I didn't understand it. You know, people tell, told, I have had these conversations with people who described this life-changing experience and this process that really made very little sense, but it was so intriguing to me that I decided I wanted to discover more about what, what was going on, you know, what is this process? And the family constellation process in a sort of nutshell, it's a, it's a healing modality 
you go there, you, you know, a, pre, a person seeks out a, facil, a facilitator because they're, you know, they're stuck in some way. Um, and what happens is the constellation process looks at where does the pattern come from in your family and ancestral line. Um, and it does it often if you're in a group setting by having people stand up and represent members of your family system. And what happens when you're standing and representing? So if I'm standing and representing the grandmother, say, I am receiving information directly that is consistent with the grandmother's energetic sense in that particular context. When I first experienced this, I, oh, I, I had shown up at a group. I really didn't know very much about the process. I was asked to represent and I stand and represent something. And all of a sudden my body is doing things. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked by what I'm experiencing. In this case, the very first time I'm, I'm standing there and I said, I feel like, I feel like I'm being pulled to the ground. And so I'm standing and the facilitator says, okay, follow your movement. So I lie down on the ground and I'm lying face down on the ground. <clears throat> and the whole surface of my body <clears throat> feels like it's being magnetized as if it's being pulled into the ground. I start to shiver, I'm so cold. And the facilitator says, look, points to me on the ground and turns to the client and says, who, who is that? And the client says, I think that's my sister. She died when I was seven and she was nine. And the moment he talks, he started talking about his sister, my whole body perks up. I feel like I'm this little, I'm so happy to be, you know, inside of me, this happiness to be named in the group and, and in, the, in the context. And the constellation ultimately was about how in the, in the family's grief, they, they stopped talking about her. They, they sort of excluded her from the system out of grief and this the healing that comes in when we brought in this the little girl and, and could remember her and give her her right place in the family system it just it meant so much for the whole family system so that's that's the constellation process but what happened was i'm coming into this process and learning about it as an educator and i was shocked by the fact that I could stand there, represent something and be receiving information. And as an educator, my thinking was, okay, if this is possible, what else is possible? Like, what does it mean that I just said, I just agreed, you know, the, there was an intention that was set. I said, yes, I stood there and I was open. And all of a sudden I'm feeling things that are consistent with this system that we're inquiring into. And so that really is the bridge for me of what I'm doing in education. I'm taking, I am a trained family constellations facilitator. I still see clients. I love that work very much. And I've also been growing a body of work that's specific to how do we um, directly contact information in, in a system. So, you know, yeah, so that's me. That's, that's the work that I'm doing. And I call that work sense thinking because I think it really does, it's a good word to, to describe that process that we're engaging in, that I'm engaging my full body senses to access fields of information. Wow, it's amazing. I, I love those experiences um, where you know that there's that extra sense and that, that you're able to bring that extra sense into reality now. And yeah, I can see really see the bridge in education. And that's also what a lot of our work is in a new paradigm is looking at that well you know here we are in learning and there's always been you know the left brain and the right brain and what I really find interesting is there's actually more than that there's more than just the left and the right brain there's like the whole brain there's the whole body there's the whole energy bodies there's you know this holistic education that we can really go into in depth and that is all part of learning and imagine the learning that is happening or can be happening when this type of learning is acknowledged and I really feel that that is the bridge like you're describing a bridge and I feel that's the bridge um, between um, 
the paradigm shift. It's almost like this beautiful rainbow bridge that I see. <laughs> if I want to make it sound that way, when I was writing a book, I had this energy of rainbows and it was like this three dimensional stuff that we've been creating and calling education. And then there's this kind of fifth dimensional or other dimensional information that's available saying, Hey, we're ready to come. And this bridge that brings it down and facilitators, educators, change makers, anybody, our children, anybody can access this and use this information for the wisest way to, to help humanity and to really be truly educated in a powerful and embodied way so I, I just love that I love this work I love it so much it really excites me and um so may I ask you have you ever run the family constellation practices within like a typical educational setting or have you always just kind of um been doing that kind of in, as a consultation like I'd love to know how that would work in maybe a classroom or can you bridge it in that way does it work in that way yes yes so there is a um, there are actually a, a around the world. It's a relatively small community, but we exist. There's a community of of people who are trained in family and systemic constellations who have been who have um, developed a body of work around systemic education. Um, so systemic education or systemic pedagogy is the general term that's being given to describe this field. Um, and so what happens in that context is we are using some of the fundamental principles that we learn about family systems and about human systems. And we are helping um, learning communities understand those principles. So that way, for example, the most fundamental principle is the principle of belonging, that we all belong. And that, and so when you are in a, a it's, and this is like a circle of, of the, the learning community, that one of the, one of the um, simplest things that we can do as educators, I, have, I also often have little figures here. One of the simplest things you can do as an educator is have everybody, um, if you created a circle that represented your learning community and you asked the student to create a little figure, they could maybe paint it when that represents themselves. Here's one here. And they can place themselves in the circle on, on the floor, on the table. And what happens is it gives an immediate picture of, of how, where people are at in terms of their sense of belonging in the learning community. Um, so systemic educators, systemic people who, are, who have been trained in the principles of family constellations and who are bridging that, that world of education, can have the wonderful tools that we are bringing into the educational community. I work with a community called ECL, which stands for um, Emotional Wellbeing, Creativity and Learning. It stands for lots of things actually, but some of the things it stands for, but it's, it's, it's an international community of systemic educators. Um, and then in the Spanish speaking world, there's, a, there's also a really robust community of, of uh, you know, systemic pedagogy. Yeah. Wow, that's really amazing. And the people who are listening um, on the podcast that maybe couldn't see, she just had this sort of a circular shape and then these kind of like almost little wooden peg, beautifully painted um, families, like people. So I really love that sense of community of um, belonging as the, a circle. And again, it so links with what we saw in the new paradigm, just this circle of everybody holding hands together as one, one whole unit and us all belonging, depending on, it doesn't matter anymore if you're a main school teacher or a homeschool mom, or you're a parent, or you're just a, a business owner, like it's just all one and the same. And how do we, as a, as a, as a collective, how do we all rise and create this new paradigm together? So I, I really love that. That's really, really Really powerful what you shared around belonging and belonging is such a um, important aspect you know to feel that sense within yourself it, you know it, it, it links to so many different emotions um, and also allows for learning to happen because there's a sense of I guess um, place you're wanting to learn because you've got a place within the community of you wanting as opposed to being excluded and like well I'm what's the point of me doing this or you know so and love okay. the word love goes with that as well right <laughs> and and a lot of the challenges you know there's so many ways of course to, to sort of enter into this conversation but we often um as we're transitioning from the old paradigm into the new <clears throat> you know, part of our work is, is healing in nature. You know, that is the nature of, of a lot of the work right now in transition. 
And so there's a becomes a question about what is our role and, and how can we as parents and facilitators, learning facilitators, um, support healing and understanding these principles is so valuable because of course, if I, as the adult, as a facilitator, you know, am struggling with my own sense of belonging with my family system, that will end up showing up in some way inside of a, any kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the community that I'm involved in. And it's the same, of course, for our children. But when we teach our children that they're not alone, so I'm holding up that little doll again, this little peg doll here. One of the things that, the simple things that we can do is we can just, if even if we just lean back in our chair or just um, invite our children to feel what's behind them and they can feel their parents behind them. You know, what happens if I place my parents behind them <clears throat> before I, you know, take on this problem that I'm working on or whatever it is, you know, if I, if I feel frustrated, if I'm working on something, whether it's a, you know, a puzzle that I've chosen to do or, 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 or a creative project or whatever, whatever it is, or maybe I'm just, you know, feeling unhappy and low, I can always just lean back and feel my parents behind me. If that's a support, sometimes it's not always a support, right? But even if it's, if, um, if, you know, our parents belong, so this, again, this is a place of belonging, even when we've had difficult relationships, they gave us life. But even as we go, as we're working through um, relationships that might be difficult, we, there are always supportive ancestors behind us. And we can always make contact with supportive ancestors and guides. Um, and just as a reminder, what does it mean when I lean my body back? What does it mean I often do a meditation where I remind people just to feel the weight of their body? Because it's a reminder that of, of the ever-present connection to the earth, that she's that we're always held so close to the earth and the weight of our body, that gravitational force is a reminder. So we're this is a you know, this is another one of those sort of very subtle but beautiful ways to keep us connected into the larger and larger sense of that field of belonging, which is as you said, it's essential for everything that we're going to do, you know, everything that we're here for. Is, is knowing ourselves in that relationship. Yeah, wow. Yeah, this work sounds really uh, fascinating. I'd love to know even, even more about it. Um, it really lights me up to know that um, this way of education is really happening and these other types of groups you're saying are forming. And not only that, that it's actually being practiced by people that, and there's a creation of this new type of uh, learning and education that's supporting what we already know as well. It's not saying we need to delete everything that we don't know, it's just adding on to what, what we do know. It's amazing. Um, I'd love to ask you about this uh, program that you created and um, I already, the senses program, because does that link in with the family constellation, sense thinking, or is that something completely different? I'd just love to hear what that is. It sounds amazing. Great. Let's dive into that. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Well, as I said in my story, um, the question that showed up for me was, oh my gosh, if I can stand here without having any information and, and be accessing all this information through my body, what is possible? <laughs> And so I have spent a lot of time then really opening into that question, what is possible? Um, so I'll tell you a little story some of some of the, the presentations I've done, one in particular that I think is um, kind of drive home this picture. Early on when I started developing this work and presenting it, um, I went to a school and it's a, it was a school in New York City and it served mostly um, black and Latino students. And, and the faculty and staff also were mostly people of color. <clears throat> and when I presented there, I asked, um, you know, if anybody had a question that they wanted to use this process for. And I think I was expecting people to say, oh yeah, we're working on this topic in history or whatever, or, or we're studying this book or, you know. And instead, um, I really appreciated this question. One teacher, an elder, an older teacher, um, he said, you know, I want to know why my students use the N-word. Because it, when I was growing up, you know, we would just never use that word. Don't they understand the history of the word? You know, so, and he was very, under, 
disturbed for him to that, that this was such a common thing. Now, of course, we have in the school um, faculty and staff of many generations. So some people feel like they knew the answer. So you could, I could already see people's bodies leaning in because they were like ready. They're like, I'm going to answer this question, you know. But I reminded the group that we're going to inquire into this question, not using like our regular sort of mental activity and thoughts and, and even dialogue. We're just going to drop into what does our body and sensing our you know, emp empathy, intuition, the felt sense, what do these capacities tell us about how to answer this question? And how would we begin to do that? How would we begin to map the question? So the one of the elements I'm introducing here is first, the capacity of us to use not just our mental cognition and mental activity, but to use our heart, to use our full sensing capacity as a, as a tool for learning for getting information. And then the other thing I was introducing is to, that we need to think systemically. We can't think in terms of just individuals, you know, we have to understand that we are always connected. We are never separate. Um, and so what happened was it, the group came up with a couple of ideas. They decided to represent um, uh, the, the, a black person, a white person and the N word, those just those three elements. And then they decided they needed to have two time points. One of them is contemporary now time. And the other one was uh, a historical, you know, during slavery. So the other thing that's happening right now is we are about to step into a field of information. And I'm also including time travel, like there's, it, there's a timeless quality to this work. So I can access information at any, at, at any point in time. So we begin by uh, working with um, the, the uh, slavery. And I have um, a person representing black person, a person representing white person, a person representing the N word. What ends up happening is the person representing black person moved as far out to the end of the room. They said, he said, if I could, I would leave the room. The person representing white person um, and, the, and the N word, they stood next to each other and just looked, right? So, you know, and we could all sort of feel what was happening in that space. So when we, when we shifted out of that field, we brought it in the new field, the contemporary time. And in this case, something very different happened. A black person and the N-word stood next to each other. And the black person put their hand around the N-word and held their hand up. And the white person stepped back. And this all happened wordlessly. And just like, you know, based on what people felt to do in the moment. What happens when you engage in a process, there's so many things that are happening right now, right? I mean, the first thing is we're, we're, we are being, uh, getting emotional, right? We are being so present to the actual dynamics, you know, the systemic dynamics, we're feeling them. We, our bodies are beautifully designed to feeling and sensing relationships and systems. That's how we're put together. It's, it's so unfortunate that we've decided to emphasize the brain when actually we are in, I mean, when I think about how much capacity this body has, you know, to receive information and to make interpret information. So we're being present to each other. We're, we're sensing together. And then, um, and there's a kind of, there's a, and we're experiencing connection with each other. Um, and so what happened afterwards is that all of a sudden it was silent. And I asked if there was any questions and people just sort of sat in silence. And the person who asked the original question said, I understand. He didn't, he, he, we, we didn't even, he just said, no, I get it, I understand. And afterwards, I remember that one of the teachers coming up and just sort of being in awe. I mean, this, this happens a lot. You know, you know, this is revolutionary is what he said, because it really is. It, it, to be able to, to, to drop out of that world that we're in, you know, in contemporary, in, you know, in the dominant field right now in education where, 
you know, to ask that kind of question, it, it, it's, you know, it can be very contentious, it can lead to a debate, it can lead to, you know, lots of different ideas, and that can have a value. But when we are at a space, which, uh, you know, I'm here to support, where we're really interested in really becoming our best selves and really stepping into the new earth and into the new paradigm, we really do need to decide to drop beneath the story, right? The story that we could tell about that and into what the, the dynamics that are really happening. Wow, that is like amazing. I can't believe that it's, um, it really is evolutionary. And to be able to witness and to have something seen in that way, like for mm. their bodies to move and for them to really be just showing rather than using the mind, using the senses beyond to be able to demonstrate the answer of that question. And so afterwards what was the final thing after you came out of the ceremony together did you have a discussion around that as well or what happened yeah. then <laughs> that's a good question well and this is actually i would say one of the challenges i'm i experienced in bringing it to mainstream education which it may not be the right path i'll be honest um but uh we can talk about that in a second but the the challenge in that context is that it was a presentation at a, a at a conference and so you know very quickly they're off to the next thing um, but I will tell you that uh, having hosted other forms of process and, and being able to be more spacious in, in time, and we're either in working with educators or just a family constellations process, something really powerful happens because when you are in the field, so I, we refer to this as the field, a field of information, a field of wisdom. Uh, the knowing field is the, uh, an expression that's sometimes used in constellation work. When you step into the field together, which is a field that connects us all, you, you step out with a much greater sense of connection to each other. And so as you, this, this is a significant shift for when you, again, old paradigm classrooms or learning, you know, learning community versus a new paradigm learning community, when you can use this as a, as a central tool for inquiry, it actually builds relationships between uh, the learners. Simply by engaging in the process builds connection. And it's, so that is a, you know, when we think about the way in which education is currently done, um, the process actually creates disconnection at so many levels, right? It, you know, it objectifies the information itself it, you know, you're, you're forced to, to compete and compare and, you know, and self-judgment and judgment of other, I mean, it's a very, it's a, it's not the healthiest as we know, right? It's a, not a healthy structure. It doesn't produce something healthy. Whereas this is actually a foundation that produces not just information, but a whole field of positive relations and connections and, and, and ultimately healing, um, a deeply healing process. And I would say the other thing for me is, in addition to you know all of these things, it also opens up um, a new path forward because when in a in the old paradigm, information comes from experts. Experts collect the information, and if you're lucky, you now most children before let's say college, but even some many people in college. They're not collecting information on their own. They're taking information that other people put together and they're, you know, synthesizing it or maybe thinking critically about it. But they are not, they do not have never been taught the, that they have the capacity, that every human being has the capacity to access information directly. So I, I, you know, there is a way in which, you know, there's an expression that knowledge is power. I would say knowing your knowing is power, that I have direct access to knowing um, through my own body, not because somebody outside of me told me what to believe. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. There's a lot that I think is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. So being able to um, use what's already within us, our sense of knowing, to be able to know how to express that outwards and then to use it in ways that are helpful, you know, like decision making or um, any kind of education, you know, any kind of learning, you can feel in your body if it's um, 
if it's resonant with you or if it's not. And I feel like that's what happened in the old paradigm is like the, you know, children are sitting there shuffling around, not resonating, you know, the wisdom saying, this is not working, this is not working. And then there's just been this push of like, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. And it wasn't working, you know, whereas having that space of knowing and everybody, every little person and every big person having all that space of knowing, then there's this kind of sense of freedom to explore learning and that will really will look different like I cannot see one classroom or one setting looking the same for each person because everybody has their own um, schema and sense of inner wisdom that they're going to be applying and so it's like well then being able to facilitate that in the way that is going to be you know most fruitful for them and, and ultimately being able to guide children to know how to bring it out of themselves rather than them being directed I think that's also a skill in itself don't you don't you think to be able to lead absolutely and I think that you know when in a in the current paradigm you know um in a when you imagine a classroom in the current paradigm the that knowing is so suppressed and disregarded you know um it's just most teachers don't understand the value of of a person's inner knowing we talk about for example internal motivation as in hopefully this child will want to learn this thing from inside of them. So that's, that is a kind of, you know, inner alignment, inner knowing if I'm internally motivated to know something, but that is, I would say a kind of uh, shallow form of the, this capacity. Right. And the other thing that happens is because this knowing is so suppressed, it shows up as behavior problems, you know, and, and so, this is again where the systemic view comes in, because when we look at a classroom or a school community and we see, let's say, bullying happen, which is, I mean, unfortunately, so common, you know, it just, it's just everywhere. Um, that bullying, we, we, we often want to say, well, this is the, it's just something wrong with that child or the child's family, you know, we, we sort of isolate the, the child and, and try to find a way to work with the child as opposed to looking at the whole system, that this system, this person is a voice inside of the system that's saying this system is broken and that we can actually create a nourishing learning community where when you bring a child in, let's say that the child does have difficulties at home, but we would like to have a learning community where when you bring that child in, it doesn't manifest as bullying, it manifests as healing, right? Because the, the larger field that the, that the learning community, the school is holding is so nourishing, so healthy that you bring in something and you actually bring health to that person, not, not as opposed to help manifesting these behaviors, you know, because the system is, is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And um, definitely necessary. And it's a key, a, definitely a key um, for this, this new paradigm. And it's a big one. It's a big one. It's almost evolutionary for humanity, because you, then you need to look at, okay, what's happening at home, what's happening in other areas in the world as well and the the educational area is one aspect of this whole massive massive thing but you know step by step everybody's doing their part it, it, it there's going to be a change for the next generations and the next generations you know maybe our generations will look back at us as the elders that were starting some stepping stones towards whatever and i already look at other greats that have been out there already walking this path it's not just us it's you know you look at rudolf steiner you look at so many other amazing amazing educators that have also been doing this work for centuries already so it's just a matter of us all holding hands and I do wonder, you know, about the mainstream system, if that will ever be shifting into something else, or if it's just going to be that it fades and people are just setting up bigger things. And, you know, I'm not the, the wisdom keeper of knowing all of that, right? I'm just here just with all people at yourselves, just creating what we believe would be beautiful for humanity. So mm -hmm. my, you know, my suspicion is that the old system is has to die, and and, and by by that I just mean um, that the old system actually serves a function, and it's the function that that the function that the, that old system uh, serves that is that is dying, 
because we need a, the, a, we need systems that align with a higher function, one that's actually invest in the highest good for each sovereign being and for the earth. And so right now, the systems that are running, including uh, which the educational system feeds into, is, is a system of extraction, oppression, inequality, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's designed <laughs> to function that way. Um, and even, and, and the thing is, even um, when you get down to the level of a teacher, and it can be sometimes hard to criticize the system because I know and have been, I love, I love teachers, I love teaching, like I loved that world, I enjoyed it, I was fortunate to be in a beautiful community of, of teachers. But I also remember being in the experience of even as we would create beautiful things together, we would get always these changes coming down from above that would require that we would have to sacrifice the beautiful things we had been able to develop together towards some goal that was outside of us. Like we, you know, and so the, the, that's, an, that's a failing system. And so we let it go. That's my feel. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm letting it go. I used to think that that the that the path was to change the system from within, and and perhaps that is a way. I don't know. But right now, for me, I really am feeling that my path is about supporting people who are creating new systems because the new system must be in alignment with with a new vision, not 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 the old vision. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's so perfect. And that leads me into another question that I ask all of our guests. Probably you've heard me ask this to all of the guests as well. So um, what is your vision for a new paradigm of education? We have talked mm -hmm. a lot already, but maybe you could give a little bit more insight. Yeah. That would be amazing. Sure. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, there's so many. Just one of the things I'm appreciating in this conversation is, as you've already named, there's so much diversity in just people and places. and um, and one of the things I would love is, is that each place, you know, when you think about the, the possibility of people coming together uh, across generations and coming to know their place, the land that they live on, the earth that they live on, to develop a relationship, a living relationship with the earth, to be able to, to if, you know, sense the voice of the earth which again is something that we can do if I could represent the voice of the earth and feel it inside of me, you know, feel the way it vibrates my body, you know, that, that, and that I can feel emotion as I speak about this. Oh my gosh. You know, so imagine what that would mean, you know, to have a community of people who are, have learned how to be so attuned to the place where they live just as a starting point, you know, and then the other vision that I have and I, that makes that I think is so fun for me, you know, is that I can imagine, for example, and this is easy, you know, with the tools that I you know, want to share with more people, I'd love to share it with more people and then real, help people realize that a group of people can come together with whatever question or challenge you know, they have on their heart, whatever thing that they look at the world and they say, no, this is terrible, or yes, I really want this. And, and they can say, how do I stop that from happening? Or how do I get this to happen? Or why, you know, why was this like this in the past? And what could it be like in the future? And we could set up that system and feel the different parts, the sense of it in our body and say, oh, here's the information I'm getting about where this could go, you know, or where this has been. Um, because of, of the world that we've created, and this is one of the things that's been lost, completely removed, interestingly, from, say, when we study history, his, humanity, the stories of humanity have been built upon people in relationship, people feeling feelings. This is kind of like a whole rich emotional information that's available there. That's actually incredibly easy to tap into. So we, when we tap into this, this like, if energetic information in a, in a system, all of a sudden, you know, all sorts of things are possible. So much is possible together. And so I feel like we're really just at the beginning. You know, as I said, I think part of our transition is about healing. The other part is about learning some two new tools about what's possible. But once we have that, 
you know, wow. I don't, you know, where will it go? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. That's so beautiful. And uh, yeah, being able to really feel the energy of the earth and just be in sync with that is is a new paradigm, like what you were just sharing, walking, walking that path of education and earth as one. And then from there, that would create the system because you'd be naturally um, aligned with the, the seasons or the, the stars or whatever's happening, you'd nat there'd nat be a natural alignment of that. So then there'd be the natural environment that would be set up and then the, the feelings would be kind of balanced. Everything would kind of have this kind of sense of balance in order to be able to to be able to learn. And I also had this um, evolutionary image then when you were sharing the information of the intuition as being information that was passed um, like through the psychic realm as well as um, like at the moment people are reading, you know, C-A-T, cat. But I, I think in the future, it'll just become natural that that word is not needed. You can look at somebody and they can already know know that part of the information and you can move on and do the the next step of the the. Right. The detail i don't know how to explain it more than that i think that's much for the future much for the future maybe not everybody's ready to hear all of that information yet but um i have had a lot of insight around what i believe the future new paradigm is but i'm, I'm working with at the moment in where we are now and what steps we can create at this moment and maybe some people already are doing this naturally anyway not to <laughs> you know but i i feel right. that as well you know so I, I really I know exactly what you mean. And there's a sense of um, I mean, sometimes I feel like I get too far ahead and I need to remind myself, OK, that's <laughs> yes, that's where that can be one of the places where we're going. But I also have to slow down to just to be with, you know, where we're at now. Um, but there's something else you said. Let me see if I can get it back. Yeah. The other thing I would say you know, when you spoke about what's possible in terms of that kind of like that psychic realm or just that realm of communication um, that doesn't require words or doesn't require, you know, the symbol that com comes in between kind of direct not knowing. Um, as you um, develop your capacity to sense in this way to, you know, to be a sense thinker, it really is like a muscle, you know, you've, you become so much more attuned to these fields of information around you, you know, and for those, for people who already feel themselves as an empath, this will, this will be very familiar. Um, but there are ways in which we really can, we, and will develop our intelligence, our sense thinking, um, like and improve our sense thinking capacity. It's been so insightful for myself as a parent and also as a, um, so I have to say, and as a mother, I am a parent and a mother, as a teacher as well, and just, uh, you know, somebody on the earth that just wants to try and do better for the world, that there's just so many different um, things that we can we can learn and do. And I really love what you're offering, like offering um, Family Constellation and your program as well. It's just so beautiful. Did you want to maybe just share a little bit more information about that or how people could reach you if, if you wanted to support them in some way? Yeah. Yes. Well, I would say um, the best way to reach me right now is to just go to my Family Constellations website, which is Green River FC, FC for Family Constellations, GreenRiverFC.com. Um, and you can also email me, hello at GreenRiverFC.com. And I would love to talk to, you know, I'd love to connect with people who are interested in the education work. I'm currently writing and, you know, figuring out how do I, you know, produce what I'm doing and, and, and share it with more people. Um, and if there are any listeners who are interested in beta testing, I'm doing some, um, as part of my writing, I'm, um, you know, wanting people to test out some exercises that I'm developing. So if people want to participate in that, that'd be great. Uh, and then I have, I, you know, I'm very fortunate to be at this point now, um, as I said, I'm involved with a systemic education group. We have a, um, an upcoming talk coming up. If you, you could email me about that um uh coming up on may 5th um we we're talking about belonging actually um and then we we're hoping to do a conference sometime maybe even soon but um again if a person is interested just give me an email i'd love to connect with people who are interested in the new paradigm in education 
Thank you so much. It's so welcome. You can post everything in our group and anybody who's listening as well who wants to be part of our new paradigm of education group, come and join us. We're all holding hands together as educators and parents and making this uh, new earth, new energy of a new paradigm together. And it's all about us all, you know, offering our gifts and then other people are receiving. I'd love to be part of this uh, beta testing as well. And I'd love to offer that anybody who's listening to the podcast, come along and um, learn something new. You know, maybe it's going to be something and door opening experience for yourself or your children you know and I, I really thank you for everything that you've shared today um yeah I don't have any other words except to say thank you with all my heart for sharing into that um energy and love and the family constellation and just the the energy of using our intuition within education and it's really really amazing I really feel um feel your heart and feel your true desire to make changes um, coming from a place of inquiry and active activism you're actually doing it as well so it's really 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 inspiring thank you so much you're very welcome thank you